Hello everybody, this is Sean Bishop from Bishop Instruments and Bows coming to you live from my house in Windsor in Berkshire, United Kingdom. Of course, things are a bit tough for everybody, for all musicians, of course, definitely tough um, with the C19 virus that's floating around. So I brought all my bows home and I thought I would just go through my collection and every few days do a Facebook Live three minute episode on a particular bow maker or with a bow that I have from home. So today I'm talking about the great master Dominic Picard. He was born in 1810 in Mircourt. His father was very wealthy, owned two vineyards. Um, and he went at the age of 12 into an apprenticeship as a hairdresser. When he was 16, the famous Parisian bow, ma uh, bow, well, bow maker, bow dealer, violin maker, Jean Baptiste Villaume, was looking for another apprentice for his workshop. They, he approached uh, Picard's father. And so from at the age of 16, Dominique went to Paris to work for Jean Baptiste Villaume. His teacher was one of the finest 19th century, or late 18th century bow makers, Persois. And he stayed with Jean Baptiste Villaume for 10 years in his workshop, uh, so much so they go along that Jean-Baptiste Villaume and uh, the great Georges Chanot uh, were his best men at his wedding. And Jean-Baptiste Villaume was also his godfather to Dominic Picard's son. Uh, in 1841, Dominic's brother Francois joined him in Paris. In 1847, uh, Dominic Picard went to Mircourt, went back home to Mircourt and, and then uh, stayed there for a number of years and he died in 1874 uh, when they checked his estate. There was still a lot of wine left, but also a lot of bows, of course. But he's famous for his bow making. Uh, my own personal observations are this, that uh, Domine Picard, in, in the violin world, we have Stradivari and Guarneri. I always say Stradivari is the, the Rolls-Royce, Guarneri is the Ferrari. In bow making, we have Francois Tourt, I say Tourt is the, the Rolls Royce and Dominic Picard is the Ferrari. So with 30 seconds left for my three minutes, I don't want to go overboard. Um, what do we look for, Dominic Picard? Very, very square heads here, okay? So it's nice and straight here, then it shoots down. Often the button starts off small, gets larger. And then in here we have a long throat, quite narrow um, there. but. Basically, what we're looking for is the tip of, of the bow. So it's quite sharp here with an elongated sort of head, I would say. Um, I'm just rambling here. But basically, oh, that's three minutes. It's quick. So this bow here, quickly, just to summarize, is actually not made of Pernambuco, which is what bows are made of. This bow by Picard is actually an exotic wood bow. So there was a bow at every price level. This would have been the cheapest of Dominic Picard's output. So this is a, an exotic wood bow. It was finished in nickel mounts as well, so not silver or gold. Um, but I will post pictures on underneath this. So if you want to see photos of this particular bow, they will be underneath in the contents section and you can uh, have a look at that and uh, send me some questions and I will get back to you very quickly. The great Dominic Picard. Thank you very much. And I'll see you Sunday where I will talk about, I think Charles Picard, his nephew. Bye-bye.